So the first question is um, from Bernadette Gargan, and I'm just going to take that one, Glenn, and I will share these between us. So Bernadette says, how long do you stay in hospital after hip surgery? Now, hip surgery is two to three nights. It does sometimes depend on your surgeon. Um, if you do need to stay a bit longer, um, that will be covered as well. So, you know, if you weren't ready to go after two to three nights, then we won't make you go home. We make sure you can do the stairs. We'll make sure that you're fit enough to go home. Um, so, but two to three nights is the average. Then um, Bernadette also asked, what happens after the operation? Do I attend my own doctor or hospital for updates? So all your post-operative reviews will be here back in the sports surgery clinic. You shouldn't really have to go back to um, the NHS or your own doctor for anything, only for you see your own doctor to have in the and it be the practice nurse to remove your stitches or your clips um, for wound review. Um, if we were worried about your wound, we would bring you back here though for wound review. Um, so they're the kind of things you have to go back for and maybe some physiotherapy. Um, but other than that, all reviews will be here. Uh, Jane has asked, do you have to be on the Northern Ireland waiting list for any specific length of time before you can be considered for the scheme? Uh, the answer is, is no, Jane. Uh, once you're on the waiting list, you're entitled to um, apply for the scheme. So, because some people have only just gone on the waiting list and other people have been waiting, um, you know, three years. So now I think then, um, Jane again asked, how long does the whole process take from approval and if agreed waiting time for surgery? So at the moment, we are being told that approval is taking anything from four to six weeks. I think the norm is around 30 days, but they've been inundated with application forms recently. So I think allow them six weeks. From that time with us, you probably waiting at the moment four to six to eight weeks for surgery. Now we're just about to go into probably one of our busier times for surgery. So it depends on the surgeon you pick as well, how many surgery dates he has here. Um, some have more than others, but we're happy to take those calls anyway, or send us an email um, and let us know. But normally you're looking probably at about four to eight weeks. Now, Glenda, I think next one's for you. Okay, so John is asking on the need of two hip replacements, um, how much would I expect to pay? Now, we have specific prices for each procedure. So there's a tab there, you can click on it, send a query, it'll come through to me, and I can send you the prices for specific uh, hip replacements. Now, just to let you know, John, that we actually do bilateral hip replacements, so you can have your two hips done together, or you can have them staged. Um, and it'd be um, interesting to know that you will actually you get for one single hip replacement you'll get 6,500 sterling back from the cross-border scheme. And, and also so, when Glenda sent you about that information she actually tells you all about how you pay as well don't you Glenda because a lot of people yeah, ask all, can they pay by credit card etc and, and that's yeah. often the question that comes up. So yes yeah, so, I mean for payments is you can do a direct bank transfer you can pay on our portal uh, you can ring me and pay over the phone or you can bring a, a bank draft it would have to be your bank draft but the information that we actually send you has all the finance information on it and how soon can they pay before surgery is it a week you like them to pay we normally if they're paying direct to the bank we would need payment in the bank about five working days beforehand which just means there's no confusion on the morning it will have hit our bank account and um, if you're paying by card just ring me a couple of days beforehand we just don't ask for payment on the morning of admission mm -hmm. because it could delay the admission process uh, because normally um, what you would have to do is you'd have to actually contact your bank uh, and tell them that there's a, a big amount going out of your account. Uh, it's just for, it's for an anti-fraud. Um, so we don't want that in the morning of admission. You know, if you actually can't, you know, the money doesn't actually come from your card yeah. uh, and it just causes um, a lot of frustration, a lot of stress. Um, so just to get the finance sorted, just give me a buzz beforehand and we can get it all sorted out. Yeah, lovely. I think then the next one, Brenda, there, Diane. So, uh, to Diane O'Hare. So, Diane, you don't actually say if your mum is actually on the NHS waiting list. In order to avail of cross border funding, you do actually have to be on an NHS waiting list. So, it looks like your x rays um, and scans were done privately. So, in answer to your question, if you're not actually on the NHS waiting list, you actually can't qualify for the cross border scheme. So, that would be the first thing to do. And we would recommend uh, going to see a surgeon privately up north because you'd be waiting a long time to see a surgeon publicly um, but make sure it's a surgeon that can actually put you on the NHS waiting list. 
And you can probably still use all those scans except as well. You know, it, as long as you have copies of them all, make sure you have copies of all those scans and MRI. Uh, Sarah, I had an MRI X-ray completed four years ago for hip impingement, and now I've been waiting for eight years for surgery. Those scans are outdated, and no, are, are they no longer relevant? Would um, they, so normally at least the X-rays they'd want one. Now they don't always need MRIs either. That's the other thing. And X-rays we always do on the day that you come in for your pre-assessment and to see the surgeon. So we would do an uh, X-ray for you anyway. That would be included in the cost. The MRI isn't included in the cost, but you don't always need an MRI for a hip replacement anyway. So it'd be probably worth just making the appointment first and getting your x-ray done on the day because you might not even need an MRI um, and avoid any expense for you as well. Okay, so Brian, uh, again, there? hip replacement, uh, the cost, if you click on the finance tab, it comes straight through to me and I can send you all the details, including the price. Um, the we, we do a package deal and that will include your COVID test initial consultation, your stay in sports surgery clinic, um, your pre-assessment, your surgeon's fees, your anaesthetist fees, uh, a post-op consultation and a review and a post-op x-ray. So it's a very comprehensive package and includes everything. The only thing it wouldn't include is if during pre-assessment you needed to have, have a consultation with a cardiologist, which would be about two to 200 to 250 euro, that wouldn't be included in it. But um, other than that, everything else is included in that. Okay. Um, right, Roisin, um, will Sanctuary Clinic have all the up-to-date relevant information about me if I go this route of surgery? Now, we wouldn't automatically, Roisin, have any information on you at all. The only information we would have is the information you send us. So anything like if you have an extensive medical history or you're on a lot of medication, you just ask your GP could actually um, you do uh, a printout for you of all of that and you bring that on the day of your pre-assessment um, but we won't have access to any of that information on um, here at all and any access will have anything you give us okay um, Sarah if I have not yet submitted the application should I still go ahead and book a consultation with the surgeon to start the process um, Sarah I would say don't um, make any appointments until you've actually at least submitted the application form because that could take six weeks and then the the problem is that you could have your appointments all made and you still haven't heard anything now once you've submitted the application and it's been in a couple of weeks you could make an appointment for about five weeks time because at that stage they should coincide but you cannot have a surgery date um, that is booked um, that is before the approval date, they 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 won't um, retrospectively approve any surgery at all. Okay, so Linda. Dave McGill, yeah, we do the trapeziectomy. Um, it would normally be a day case procedure. Again, click on the finance tab, and we can send you the prices. Um, that surgery would normally be um, a day case procedure. Would normally be an overnight. But if you needed to stay for oh, if you need to stay overnight for medical reasons, you would be covered for that as well. Okay. Gordon, is it possible to have consultant, consultant appointments in the North if the surgeon works in Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland? Uh, no, it isn't apparently because they won't cover that. In, you could have the appointment in the North, but they won't cover that when they refund you. That's the only thing. They'll only refund you for appointments done outside of Northern Ireland. Um, so most people do have all their appointments here, but I do know there are some, some of our consultants work in the North and the South. So, and I know some of them would see somebody in the North, but they will charge you on that day and you might not be able to claim that back. So it's just up to you whether you decide it's easy to see someone, but you still have to come back for your pre-assessment if you're having a hip done. So if you're coming back for pre-assessment, you have to come down for the appointment anyway. We do them on the same day. But I know if it's something like a shoulder or a foot and ankle that you may not need a pre-assessment. So that's you can talk to the consultant about that, but you might not get reimbursed just for that part of the, the package price. OK, um, Gordon, what is included in the pre-assessment? Does it include x-ray and bloods? So the pre-assessment includes x-ray, includes your bloods, includes an ECG. If you need a cardiac echo, um, we, it's included as well. As we said, the only thing that's not included, any MRIs or any tests that you need that aren't related actually to your surgery or that might be related to some external issue that's been found like hematologist or cardiologist. CT scan um, wouldn't be covered either. 
Yeah, a lot of them these days do them by phone since COVID. So they are cheaper than they used to be if you're having to see them face to face. Okay. Um, so are chylectomies performed at the clinic, please? That's Monica. Monica, that's foot and ankle. Yes, they, they are. Um, Joe is 100%. That's one for you, Glenda, there. Um, normally, you would get between 40 and 60% back. You wouldn't get 100% yeah. back. Certainly for hips and knees, it's between 40 and 60 percent. We were talking there about the foot and ankle, the shoulder and the hand surgeries that they're very um, complicated sometimes and there are lots yeah. of different surgeries. So what would help you when you're coming to price those surgeries for people? Right. So, well, especially the ankle and the shoulder procedures that are always done as multiple procedures. And um, so to save time and to get um, a specific price. Um, we would ask patients to send the referral into us. So once they get the referral sent into us, we can then get it sent over to the surgeon and then they can code it up. It's normally two or three procedures, definitely for the shoulders anyway. And then once we get the referral, we can give a specific price rather than approximate. And then the patients know exactly what surgeons they have. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. And our price is all quoted in euros, aren't they? So, the, oh, yeah, so euro, yeah. They, they, yeah, we don't accept, we don't accept sterling at all. We yeah. don't have a sterling account. So yeah. Okay. Um, are a post op physio most people do not need or get post total knee replacement or total hip replacement at page physio in the nhs um okay so most people in the as well here they do recommend especially physio for our, our, our knee replacements now the hip replacements don't always need physio and they they can do very well uh, if you know without it um, but we do recommend that the knee replacements do have physio but if they're doing well with their their exercises that they're given um, then you know that you can assess it that way but if you aren't and you're not getting flexion then we always do recommend physio and it really is up to the consultant you see and that's the conversation you can have with him about how much physio he, he recommends for you. Um, Dorothy, do you have to self-isolate before surgery? So you have to self-isolate. So we do the COVID test. We'll talk about the COVID test. Uh, is done 72 to 40 hours before your surgery. And we do recommend that you isolate from the time you've had the test to the time you come down. Um, and, and also a lot of people are now getting their tests done closer to home um, rather than coming back down here for them. And that's a question you can ask once you get, you've been seen and you decide that you know, you'd, you'd rather not travel back down again three days before surgery and you can get your test done as long as it's 72 to 48 hours before and as long as you have your results when you come in for admission and we will take it off the, the cost as well. You just need to let Glenda know that you've, you've had that done externally. Um, can pre-assessment be booked if verbal confirmation has been given of approval? Um, verbal com confirmation. I, I, I don't know anyone that's, yeah, but look, I, I think that um, we, I can still book, we can book the pre-assessment and the appointment if you, if the forms have gone in and, you know, and you, but we will we'll book it for about five weeks time anyway. Yeah, just so to have, yeah, you just have, your to have approval, but you're happy if you want to. Sorry, if you, yeah. you just have to have the approval before you have the actual surgery. Surgery, yeah. So we're happy to do that. But what I do say to people is just we won't book it before you've actually filled in the forms because a lot of people have found then they're having terrible problems getting the letter that they're on the waiting list and that already they've, they've already made appointments and then they're not able to make them because they haven't actually been able to get the form in. So once the form is submitted and you're waiting for it to your approval to come back, we're happy to take the call and make the appointment. Um, um, Ruth, are many people turned down, and if so, why? Now, I we haven't heard of anyone being turned We've been down. doing this, yeah, for eight years, I think, at the cross border, and I haven't known one person Once to be turned down. Once you're on the down. NHS waiting list, there's no complications. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ruth, query, Ruth, I, Fiona, maybe you take that query. Um, how Ruth, long? So, Ruth, uh, she needs both knees replaced if they're set surgeries. Yeah. How long is recommended between the two surgeries? given that I only have in a nine month window. Okay, so usually what the consultants do, if you don't want to have them done bilaterally, the time would be, most consultants do them six to eight weeks, say six to eight weeks, especially knees, you know, there's a lot more work entailed in the knee replacement. So I'd probably be looking more at eight weeks rather than six weeks. It is up to your individual surgeon, but I think eight weeks is probably 
um, ones that most of them would recommend. And it also depends how well you've done from the first one. So, you know, you take all those things into account. Um, Mavis, can we discuss having both knees done at the assessment at 78? Am I too old for this? Um, now, Mavis, yeah, it's something that you can discuss at the assessment. Not all surgeons do them, but it's definitely something to discuss with your consultant to see if you're suitable. Um, and at 78, you're not too old. I think we did an 89 year old recently who had both knees and he's done very well. So, no, you're, you're, you're still young. Mavis, you're on your spring chicken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Daryl, if you need more physio, is it organized back in Northern Ireland? Now, Daryl, it does depend on what surgery you have done, um, but it is your GP that normally organizes that for you. And it is in Northern Ireland because it's probably too far to be traveling up and down for physio, but it also does again depend on what surgery you're having done. Um, John, if there are any emergency complications after you're at home, will the NHS take over? Um, Okay. Yeah, John, if, if, like if you got very sick at home, they, they would take over. Now, if it was a complication to do with surgery, as we said, there's no, you, uh, the consultants here prefer that you would come back. It's very rare that it happens. But if there's anything, it's a complication of surgery and you're fit and able to travel, that's the main thing, then we would bring you back here. Other than that, the NHS will take over. You know, sometimes people may get swelling in their leg, they, they think maybe they've had a clot or something and, and yet they go straight into the NHS and they'll scan their leg, you know, straight away. There isn't any problems there. It's it, it's only things that are very particular that maybe, and your GP would also probably tell you to come back if he was concerned. But if it's an, an emergency, the NHS will definitely take over. And and can I just mention there, um, John, if you're readmitted within 30 days of discharge, there won't be a fee. No. You come back in after 30 days. Okay. Uh, okay. David Heron, do you do laminectomy for spinal canal stenosis? Now, David, we do do laminectomies here um, with all the spikes, especially the spinal. If anyone's got spinal surgery they need to have done, um, the consultants would all want to see your letter of referral. And that's the letter you need to prove that you're on the waiting list um, before they'd agree to do any spinal surgery. So what I would suggest, if anyone is have, waiting to have spinal surgery, just send a letter into Rebecca or myself, um, and then one of us will give it to one of the spinal surgeons to look at to just agree. And then Glenda can price that up because it's, it's not as easy to price for spines as it is just for plain hip and knee replacement. So there's all there's a lot more operations, same with the shoulder and the foot and ankle, they're not as easy to price. So there's a lot of different codes, different types of yeah, surgery. Levels as well. <laughs> so we do like to get letters from those and then we can ask our consultants to give us the codes for them and then we can price them up for you so that you're, you're getting the right the right cost. Yvonne, once you have approval, do you have nine, do you have nine months past July 22nd to have surgery or does it have to be completed? Okay, Yvonne, so if, if you put your application in say in May, you should have still have nine months to get your surgery done. That's as far as we're aware that once you've got approval, you have nine months to get that surgery done within that approval time. So you should be covered. But once you get your approval, they they should they would tell you that anyway. Um, Adrian, do you need to have a letter from the NHS confirm that you're on the waiting list or verbal written confirmation? No, you have to. It's the one thing you have to have is. Um, a letter. So that letter, when you have the application form, I've got the application form here, the, they ask you for evidence that you are on a waiting list. So whatever happens, you have to add that letter to the application form. Like I said, your GP should have that letter or the consultant that you saw. So yeah, but they, they won't take anything. And a lot of people get confused because they say, no, my GP sent a letter to put me on the list, but they've actually only sent a letter to put them on the list to see a consultant for the first time. The consultant then has to put them on the surgical list. So just make sure that if you're on an actual surgical list with a hospital in Northern Ireland. Um, so Rose, I'm waiting on approval as I posted the form four weeks ago. Can I book a surgeon yet or do I need the evidence of approval first? No, Rose, look, you can get in touch with us and, and we can actually start that process for you. Um, so Fanula asked me how successful is a knee replacement and, and how many are completed within the last month. Now, Fanula, 
I think when you were listening to Gavin's talk, he probably would have explained that the knee replacement, you know, you're looking at 12 months of like hard work to get the knee back. And, you know, that I think he spoke to and everybody is different as well with that. So I think that's something you have to discuss with your surgeon. Um, and how many have we completed within the last month? I can't tell you in the last month, but we do about a thousand a year. So we do about a thousand knee replacements a year, um, which is, is, is quite a, a lot. We're probably one of the highest hospitals in the country for knee replacements and hip replacements. Um, I hope that answers your question. But look, if you want to, we can always give you a call if you send us your number or email and I can talk to you a bit more about that. Um, I just want to know what's the cost of a private room. Um, all the prices that we quote are for semi-private rooms and in our semi-private rooms, there's only two beds. Um, the reason we don't actually offer the private room is because our insured patients, all of our, a lot of our insured patients would actually have to go mm -hmm. for the private room. If you wish to take private room, uh, let's say for a hip or knee replacement, the difference in cost would be about a thousand euro. But again, if you want to hit, if you want to hit the finance tab um, and put that query through to me, I can let you know what the semi-private rate is and the private rate. But approximately a thousand euro would be the difference in a private room. Janice said, hi, just wondering if it's means tested to determine what which percentage is refunded. Actually, Janice, no, I think whatever happens, there's a standard price. So if if it's if what they give you, say they give you eight thousand for a hip replacement, um, that's what you get. So it doesn't matter if you go to somewhere where the hip replacement is fourteen thousand or twelve thousand or ten thousand, they still give you the same amount. So and if they don't means test it. There's a set price, and that's the standard price. It it, it doesn't matter where you go or or and there's no means testing at all on that. Um, Gordon, who would supply specialist seating, et cetera, for aftercare for hip replacement? Okay, um, Gordon, so when you have your hip replacement here, so you will need uh, a high toilet seat and things, and that's included, and you get that when you go home. Anything else, if you need anything else at home, say you want to get a seat in or um, other equipment, then you would need to go through the community for that um, and occupational therapist on the community for that. Now, those kinds of things, sometimes you can't request until you're actually a patient in the hospital, but anything like that, convalescence, um, special care packages at home, you just need to let us know, you let me know if you need any of those things beforehand. And when you're having your pre-assessment, that's a good time to talk about things that you might need afterwards, any care that you might need at home, especially if you live on your own. So that's the time to talk to pre-assessment about it. They usually then let me know and I just get in contact with the different trusts on that one. Uh, if you want um, to take Anne McKay. You can take that I one. I want to know, do all the surgeons vary yeah. the package price? Um, and the answer to that is uh, no, they all charge the same because we have an agreement with all our surgeons. All our surgeons are on board uh, with us in price. So um, it doesn't matter which surgeon you go to for your hip or your knee, uh, the price will be exactly the same. Maureen, uh, yeah, Maureen, you're asking there again about the letter from the NHS consultant to the GP saying it's put on the waiting list. So that, that is actually sufficient. Yeah, as long as that letter is from your NHS consultant to your GP saying it's put you on the waiting list, that, that's exactly the proof that you need. Um, and every GP should have a copy of that letter. Um, so I think someone else has asked a question there. Do you want to just move that one over? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jean Chambers, uh, can you tell us any more about the methods for using the scheme while waiting on the waiting list for the official consultant's referral? Um, yeah, Jean, I think that's probably, you could probably go and see somebody privately as long as they have a waiting list or in, in one of the public hospitals. But I'm happy if you want to send in your email and contact the team and we'll give you a bit more information on that one. I think that's all the questions now. So listen, thanks so much for joining us tonight and thanks Kendra and Gavin for contributing.